We were a feisty little paper. Twelve of us in the newsroom, a couple other investigative reporters, they were doing kick-ass stories about the local water company, uncovering, you know, little political corruption here and there, um, just keeping a real eye on all the local communities, the, the county, the city councils. Um, just to, it was like what you want a hometown paper to be. Little did I know that was the golden era of the Monterey Herald. That golden era ended in 2012 when Alden Global Capital, a combination hedge and private equity fund, took control of the Monterey County Herald. We didn't even know who owned us for a while. We finally figured out it was at the end of the little chain, there was this hedge fund from New York called Alden Global Capital that nobody had ever heard of. And of course, I'm an investigative reporter. I look at corporate things, you know, so I was like really curious about these guys, but really couldn't find anything about them. They almost didn't exist. You know, when you Googled, there was just really nothing there. But there was something there, and its impact on the newsroom where Julie worked was felt almost immediately. I would go to the supply cabinet and there was nothing there. <laughs> then there were mice in the newsroom. And nobody did anything about it. <laughs> and then the hot water stopped working. Alden Global Capital remained a malevolent but unseen force in Julie's newsroom. We never saw anybody from Alden in our newsroom, in, in the building, anywhere, ever. Um, they were just this mysterious New York entity. Alden would soon demonstrate a terrible talent for feasting on the assets of the Monterey Herald. I don't even think they knew what newspapers did. I mean, I think literally we were just numbers on a spreadsheet to them. And by the time Julie realized what was going on, Alden had already accumulated a small empire of newspapers that met much the same fate. They had a secret real estate firm that I found out was selling all our newspapers real estate. It wasn't just the Monterey Herald's building that got sold, it was like all the papers buildings were getting sold. And we didn't even know where the money went. In some cases, we were finding they had sold the building and then were leasing it back to the newspaper. And so the newspaper had to pay for the building they once owned. They were investing employee pensions in their own fund in the Cayman Islands and forgot to tell anybody. <laughs> you know, and that pension performed below the market rate. They were just basically using the newspapers as their own personal ATM machine. Private equity firms and some hedge funds like Alden Global do everything they can to maximize revenue and squeeze costs. Whether they are price gouging people for vital services, shortening life expectancies in nursing homes, looting the assets of storied retailers, or destroying local newspapers, the private equity industry is responsible for some of the most harmful business practices in the United States. Its abuses are pervasive, stretching across the American economy through many industries. Alden Global was running a typical private equity playbook. Buy the company mostly with borrowed money, load it with debt, sell off valuable assets like real estate, and in the process, destroy the vital function that journalists play in local communities. Studies have shown that communities living in so-called news deserts pay higher taxes, have greater debt loads, and face more political corruption. And it's no wonder. Without journalism that covers the nuts and bolts of local governance, like city council meetings, school boards, and community events, the public may never know what happens. Bernie Lunzer, former president of the News Guild, a division of the Communications Workers of America, put it bluntly. When the watchdogs are gone, democracy dies. Private equity has helped kill the watchdogs. Alden headquarters is the lipstick building in Manhattan. I mean, you can't have a more potent symbol of hedge fund greed than the top floor of the lipstick building, which is Alden's headquarters. Now, the lipstick building is the building made famous by Bernie Madoff. That's where he had his <laughs> headquarters. So it's already got this kind of image and reputation and it's gleaming and glistening. Journalists and their advocates have called for an end to Alden Global's march through American media. 
and financial reformers are seeking a fundamental restructuring of the predatory private equity and hedge fund industry by passing federal legislation known as the Stop Wall Street Looting Act. Newspapers are being deliberately destroyed now. They're not just suffering, they're being deliberately destroyed by a hedge fund so that it can take everything out of them that it wants. And that's when the national conversation about small town press, about saving local news, finally turned a corner where I wasn't surprising people anymore when I said, hey, it's a hedge fund that did this. Now people were like, we heard about that hedge fund. <laughs> now people were beginning to understand why their local news was just a shadow of its former self.